So what is up guys, Brandon Suter back and today I am here with NFL Week, Derek Carr, Dak Prescott, Adam Vinatieri, and Brett Favre. It is week four predictions. If you're looking to watch a certain matchup, timestamps are in the description box below. So click on that match you want to see. Anyways, last week I did not have a losing record because I was 8-8. Eight eight. I was 8-8. Eight eight. I'm currently 22-25-1 on the season. Honestly, once again, not great, but once again, still a lot to go in the season. So we got 16 matches to get to. So without further ado, let's get this video started. So we're starting off with our Thursday night football matchup between the Miami Dolphins and the Cincinnati Bengals. It's weird to think that back in 2019, these two teams were competing for the number one overall pick, whether it be Joe Burrow or Tua Tagovailoa. But hey, now, now they're both playing. Anyways, starting off with the Miami Dolphins, you guys are 3-0 in the season, which I'll be honest, I didn't expect. Tua Tagovailoa, he was all right there for 186 yards. One touchdown, no picks. However, he did go out in the game with a possible concussion, but he came back pretty quickly. The big question is, uh, did the Dolphins kind of flub the concussion protocol process? Honestly, who knows? But anyways, a lead rusher was Chase Edmonds. Couldn't get anything going. Only had 21 yards, but he did have two touchdowns. A lead receiver, Jalen Waddell, four receptions, 102 yards. Tyreek Hill, two receptions, 33 yards. Uh, Devin Smythe, uh, two, three receptions, 23 yards. That was pretty much it. And uh, the defense, you know, they had some struggles against the Bills. Sure, they allowed a lot of yards, but they did bend, but they did not break as they only allowed 19 points. But of course, the greatest moment of the game was the butt punt. Somehow, Thomas Morstead kicks it into a player's butt and it goes out for a safety, but you still pulled out the win. So that's a huge flex. Uh, and then the Bengals, a uh, big win that you had over the New York Jets. It's kind of like what we expected out of you. You needed to win this game. Joe Burrow, 275 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, a decent game. Lead rusher was Sanjay Prine with uh, 47 yards, but receiving game, that's where it's at. Whether it was Tyler Boyd, four receptions, 105 yards, and a touchdown. T. Higgins, five receptions, 93 yards. Jamar Chase, six receptions, 29 yards, and a touchdown. And then Sanjay Prine, two receptions, 14 yards, and a touchdown. That was pretty much it. And the defense, you know, you guys did lock down the New York Jets. But once again, I was saying, this is the Jets, like, Joe Flacco fluked his way into his first two games. Now he's back on earth. But the big highlight of this game is that you guys are going to be showing off the new all-white uniforms, especially that white helmet. I'm, I'm loving it already. Anyways, Bengals are four-point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cover the spread. And now you have our very first Sunday matchup, a our first London game this season, 9.30 Eastern time, a rematch of the 2017 NFC Divisional game and the 2019 uh, NFC wildcard game between the Minnesota Vikings and my boys in the New Orleans Saints. Start off with the Vikings, a big 28-24 to victory over the Detroit Lions. Kirk Cousins was solid through for 260 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Uh, lead rusher was Dalvin Cook with 96 yards and a touchdown. He did go with an injury, but he could be back for this week. I think he should be, followed by Alex Mattinson, 28 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver was KJ Osborne, five receptions, 73 yards in the game-winning touchdown, followed by Adam Heelan, six receptions, 61 yards and a touchdown. Then Irv Smith Jr., Two receptions, 32 yards. Now, if you're looking where Justin Jefferson is, he only had three receptions for 14 yards. But props out to the Detroit Lions because they knew how to cover this guy. Like, they gave him absolutely no space. They just did a great job. But the defense, they definitely struggled against the Detroit Lions, but they were able to lock them down in the fourth quarter, which was absolutely critical. And then the Saints, is it already panic time? Because already I'm starting to feel a little bit of panic because obviously we offense doesn't produce until the fourth quarter. And we got humiliated 22-14 to 14 by the Carolina Panthers. Jameis Winston threw for 353 yards, one touchdown, two picks. Still, I really don't think he should be playing, especially now that he has four back fractures and an ankle injury. Lead rusher was Camaro with 61 yards, but a critical fumble. Uh, Mark Ingram with 18 yards and a touchdown. Lead receiver was Chris Olave, nine receptions, 147 yards. I'm already loving the signing of, uh, I mean, the drafting of Chris Olave. Absolutely great guy. Followed by Traquan Smith, four receptions, 105 yards. And then Michael Thomas, five receptions, 49 yards. And that was pretty much it. And the defense, we actually did an excellent job against the Carolina Panthers, but the offense just completely sold on us. Anyways, I'll Vikings are three-point favorites to win this one. But, you know, of course, give me the sense. And now you have our very next matchup, our first Sunday 1 o'clock matchup, a rematch of the 2016 NFC wildcard game between the Seattle Seahawks and the Detroit Lions. Starting off with the Seahawks, just a tough 27-23 loss against the Atlanta Falcons. Although Geno Smith, you know, after a rough uh, second game of the season, he's bounced back and had a pretty good game through for uh, 325 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Lead rusher was Rashad Penny with 66 yards, followed by DJ Dallas with 21. But once again, it's really all in the receiving game, whether that is uh, Tyler Lockett, nine receptions, 76 yards, DK Metcalf, five receptions, 64 yards, and a touchdown, or uh, Parkinson, uh, two receptions, 44 yards, 
that was pretty much it. And the defense, they actually really struggled against the Atlanta Falcons, especially against Cordero Patterson. But overall, you know, with Cordero Patterson's clicking, it's kind of hard to stop the wide back. And then the Lions, you know, despite the loss to the uh, Minnesota Vikings, this offense looks pretty good, especially when it's led by Jared Goff. He had 277 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Lead rusher was Jamal Williams with uh, 87 yards and two touchdowns. Lead receiver was Josh Reynolds, nine reception, uh, six receptions, 96 yards, followed by Amon Ross St. Brown, six receptions, 73 yards, and DJ Chark, three receptions, 46 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense, you know, they did a decent job against the Minnesota Vikings at first, but they just completely collapsed in the fourth quarter, which had they bar had they avoided a collapse, they could have been 2-1 in the season. But once again, the Lions are still looking extremely good. And they're four and a half point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cover this And now you have our very next matchup, a rematch of the 2010 AFC Championship game between the New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Starting off with the Jets, I called it that uh, Joe Flacco's first two games were a complete fluke. And he would get exposed by the Cincinnati Bengals. Not a good game for him. Barely completed 50% of his passes. 285 yards, no touchdowns, two picks. Lead rusher was uh, Brees Hall and Michael Carter. They both had 39 yards in the day. Lead receiver was Tyler Conklin, eight receptions, 84 yards. Followed by uh, Garrett Wilson, six receptions, 60 yards. And then Brees Hall, six receptions, 53 yards. And that was pretty much it. In your defense, they really just had a lot of trouble uh, against the Bengals. But to be honest, the Bengals, hopefully they're out of their first two weeks and are actually going to be a good offense now. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers, yeah, that was a humiliating 29-17 to loss against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Mitch Trubisky, a bad game by him, threw for 207 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Lead rusher was Najee Harris with 56 yards and a touchdown. Lead receiver, Deontay Johnson, eight receptions, 84 yards, followed by uh, Pat Firemuth, two receptions, 41 yards, and uh, George Pickens, three receptions, 39 yards, and quite possibly catch of the year. Uh, but the defense, it just got exposed by Jacoby Brissett, Amari Cooper, and Nick Chubb. Now, getting exposed by Nick Chubb and Amari Cooper, not a problem. They're they're, ex they're excellent players, but Jacoby Brissett, that's going to leave a bit of a mark. But uh, don't disrespect my boy Jacoby Brissett. Once again, I've met him, and he's such a great guy. Uh, Steelers are three-point favorites to win this one. But you know what? I'm going to say that the Jets pull up the victory here because they could be getting Zach Wilson back this week. And even with Joe Flacco, Jets pull up the upset. And now you have our very next matchup between the Chicago Bears and the New York Giants. Starting off with the Bears, a 23-20 victory over the uh, Texans was pretty solid. Although Justin Fields looks horrible as a passer. Only threw the ball 17 times. Uh, didn't even complete 50% of his passes for 106 yards. No touchdowns and two picks. David Montgomery, he did go out with injury. But Khalil Herbert carried the load at running back with 157 yards. And uh, two tutties on the day. Lead receiver was Cole Komet, two receptions, 40 yards. Followed by Darno Mooney, two receptions, 23 yards. And then Equimania St. Brown, one reception, 20 yards. And that was pretty much it. And the defense, you know, they were able to hold down the Texans. But to be fair, the Texans, they're not exactly the most explosive of offenses. Uh, and then the New York Giants, uh, I told you guys, I told you all that the legend of Cooper Rush was too good. You lost 23-16 to the New York, I mean, the Dallas Cowboys. And kind of proved that you were fraudulent at 2-0. Daniel Jones, not a great game for him. Threw for 196 yards. No touchdowns in a pick, although Saquon Barkley, he's looking absolutely legit. Ran for 81 yards in a touchdown. And Daniel Jones, well, he had a decent rushing game, followed up with 79 yards. Uh, lead receiver was Sterling Shepard, five receptions, 49 yards, but he did tear his ACL, and he is going to be out for the season. That, that is a huge, huge loss for the New York Giants. Saquon Barkley, uh, four receptions, 45 yards. And then Bellinger, four receptions, 40 yards. That was pretty much it. And per usual, Kenny Galladay just can't get it going on with the Giants. And the defense, sure, they were able to hold the Cowboys down to 23 points. But at the same time, it is a Cooper rush-led offense. And uh, your offense just completely sold on you guys. Giants are three-point favorites to win this one. But I'm feeling good about the Bears. I say that the Bears pull off the upset. And now you have our very next match of a classic NFC South rivalry between the Tennessee Titans and the Indianapolis Colts. Starting off with the Titans, uh, you won? Maybe I was too quick to hate on you guys. Beat, beating the Raiders 24-22. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, it was an okay game for him and threw for 264 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Uh, lead rusher Derrick Henry, proving that he still had something left in the tank, ran for 85 yards and a touchdown. I'm hoping this can be the turning point of the season for him. Uh, lead receiver was Robert Woods, four receptions, 85 yards, followed by Derrick Henry, five receptions, 58 yards, and then uh, Nate Westbrook, three receptions, 40 yards. And that was pretty much it. And the defense, you know, they did a great job against the Raiders in the first half, but they crumbled in the second half. They bended, but they did not break. Uh, and then the uh, Indianapolis Colts. You guys are the most confusing team in the NFL. You know you're gonna have weeks where you're gonna be where you're gonna get destroyed by crappy teams, but then all of a sudden you beat the Chiefs. Matt Ryan threw for 222 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. 
Pretty solid game from him. Uh, Jonathan Taylor led rushing with 71 yards. Lead receiver was Michael Pittman Jr., uh, eight receptions for uh, 72 yards, followed by Alec Pierce, uh, three receptions, 61 yards, and then Naheem Hines, five receptions, 23 yards. And that was pretty much it. And the defense, they did a great job at holding down the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, ultimately, a big pick off Patrick Mahomes at the end just sealed the game for you guys. So props out to you for winning that. Although, please be consistent and please don't lose the fucking Jaguars again. Anyways, Colts are three and a half point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cover the spread. And now you have our very next matchup between the LA Chargers and the Houston Texans. Starting out with the Chargers, uh, panic bells should be ringing that you just lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Sure, you're missing a fair amount of guys in defense. You didn't have JC Jackson and Joey Bosa just went on IR. So you guys kind of dealing with the injury bug right now. Anyways, Justin Herbert uh, threw for 297 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Lead rusher was Sony Michelle. He could only crack uh, 22 yards, but you guys were down for most of the game. So uh, obviously you're going to be throwing it more. Lead receiver was uh, Jordan Palmer, six receptions, 99 yards, followed by Jalen Guyton, two receptions, 64 yards. And then Austin Eckler, eight receptions, 48 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense just got exposed by the Jacksonville Jaguars. But I take a little less shame in that because it's led by Doug Peterson as opposed to Urban Meyer because Urban Meyer, my God, he was a mess. Uh, and then the Houston Texans uh, just fell short to the Bears, losing 23 to 20. Davis Mills, not a great game by him, threw for 245 yards, one touchdown, two picks. Although Damian Pierce had a great uh, game as he ran for 80 yards and a touchdown. Lead receiver was Moore uh, with three receptions for 63 yards, followed by Nate Collins, two receptions, 41 yards, and then Jordan Atkins, uh, three receptions, 31 yards, and a touchdown. And that was pretty much it. And the defense, you know, they were able to hold down Justin Fields because, you know, he's really been struggling as a quarterback, but they just completely collapsed against Khalil Herbert, so that's a tough pill to swallow, even though Herbert's a pretty solid running back. Anyways, Chargers are five and a half point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win, but don't cover the spread. And now you have our very next matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Atlanta Falcons. Starting off with the Browns, a stunning 29-17 victory over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jacoby Brissett, he looked pretty solid through for 220 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. Uh, lead rusher was Nick Chubb, doing what he does best, just ravaging defenses with 113 yards and a touchdown. He's the best pure rusher in the league, and honestly, the best running back in the league. Lead receiver was uh, Mari Cooper, seven receptions, 101 yards, and a touchdown, followed by David Njoku, nine receptions, 89 yards, and a touchdown. But once again, David Njoku is a player that is just completely in waves. He's going to have some excellent games, but most of the time, he's just going to be extremely subpar. And then Kareem Hunt, three receptions, 14 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense, um, they were able to shut down the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, but that's what happens when they're run by Matt Canada on offense. It's just a complete uh, shit show. And then the Falcons, a big 27-23 victory over the Seahawks. You nearly choked the game away in the fourth quarter, but you uh, did not falcon the game away. Marcus Mariota, he looked okay through for 229 yards, one touchdown, one pick. But Cordero Patterson led rushing with 141 yards and a touchdown. Lead receiver was Kyle Pitts, five receptions, 87 yards. Solid game from him, followed by Drake London, three receptions, 54 yards and a touchdown. Then Olamide Zacchaeus, two receptions, 49 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense, they, def they definitely struggled uh, quite a bit against the Seahawks. But we're able to pull out the victory. Anyways, Browns are a point and a half favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cut the spread. And now you have our very next match of a classic NFC East rivalry between the Washington Commanders and the Dallas Cowboys. Starting off with the Commanders, a tough 24-8 loss against the Philadelphia Eagles. Carson Wentz, was there a hit put out on him? Because he was left out to die. He threw for 211 yards, no touchdowns, no picks, and was sacked nine times. Nine times he got sacked. Dude was left out to die. Uh, lead rusher was Antonio Gibson with 38 yards on a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver, of course, Gary Terry, six receptions, 102 yards, followed by uh, Curtis Samuel, seven receptions, 48 yards, and then J.D. McKissick, uh, six receptions, 32 yards. That was pretty much it, and the defense just got absolutely scored by the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Now, mind you, the rush game really could not get anything going as the pass game was their downfall. Now, as, as even though Jalen Hurts has done a good job of the pass this season. The fact that it was the pass that beat you and not the run of the Eagles, uh, alarm bells should be ringing right now. Uh, and then the Cowboys, uh, I told once again, I'm on the Cooper Rush hype train. He, as you guys won 23-16, he's 3-0 as a starter. Uh, Rush, solid game, 215 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Uh, lead rusher was Tony Pollard with uh, 105 yards, followed by Ezekiel Elliott with uh, 73 yards and a touchdown. Lead receiver was uh, CeeDee Lamb, eight receptions, 87 yards and a touchdown, followed by Noah Brown, uh, with five receptions for uh, 54 yards. Then Hendershot, three receptions, 43 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense was just able to lock down the New York Giants. But once again, it's a Danny Dimes-led offense. So uh, it's kind of what I expect. Anyways, the Cowboys, they're five-point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win 
and cover the spread. And now you have our very next matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Philadelphia Eagles. Starting off with the Jaguars, this could have been the Trevor Lawrence apology game where we all apologize for calling him a bust because, my God, he did super well. Won 38-10 over uh, the Chargers. As Lawrence Heath here for 262 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Lead rush was James Robinson with 100 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver was Zay Jones, 10 receptions, 85 yards and a touchdown. Followed that up with Christian Kirk, uh, six receptions, 72 yards and a touchdown. And then Marvin Jones Jr., four receptions, 33 yards and a touchdown. And that was pretty much it. And the defense just did a great job at uh, shutting down the uh, LA Chargers. Uh, and then the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, one of the two undefeated teams left in the NFL. And they have been amazing. Uh, Jalen Hurts did well through for 340 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Uh, in terms of rushing, nothing really happened as Miles Sanders only mustered up 46 yards. And you guys only had 72 yards on the ground. But once again, it was all in the passing game. Uh, Devontae Smith, eight receptions, 169 yards. Nice and a touchdown. Followed by A.J. Brown, five receptions, 85 yards and a touchdown. And then Galka Serra, I don't even know how to say it. One reception, 40 yards. And then Dallas Goddard, three receptions, 26 yards and a touchdown. That was pretty much it. And the defense, yeah, they completely just killed Carson Wentz. You know, kind of a revenge game on them, and you guys did super well. So the Eagles, they're six and a half point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cover the spread. And now you have our very next matchup, a rematch of the 2020 AFC Divisional game between the Buffalo Bills and the Baltimore Ravens. Starting off with the Bills, a tough 21-19 to loss against the Miami Dolphins, although the one thing that was going against you was the extreme Miami heat. It was over 100 degrees that game, players with cramps, people going out during the game. So honestly... You know, had the weather been maybe a little bit more favorable, you probably wouldn't have won this game. But Josh Allen was a beast through for 400 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Dude threw the ball 63 times and had a 66% completion percentage. This guy's an absolute dog, and he led rushing as well with 47 yards, followed by Zach Moss with 46. Lead receiver was Devin Singletary, nine receptions, 78 yards, and a touchdown, followed by Isaiah McKenzie, seven receptions, 76 yards, and a touchdown. And then Stephon Diggs, seven receptions, 74 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense, sure, they were able to keep down um, the Dolphins as much as possible, but they just fell short. Uh, and then the Ravens, a big 37-26 victory over the New England Patriots. Lamar Jackson, a lot like Aaron Judge, is kind of betting on himself this season. And it's paying off as he had 218 yards, four touchdowns, one pick, and led rushing with 107 yards and a touchdown. Lead receiver, who else but Mark Andrews, eight receptions, 89 yards, and two touchdowns, followed by Rashad Bateman of... Uh, Two receptions, 59 yards. Then Devin Duvernay, two receptions, 25 yards and a touchdown. That was pretty much it. And the defense, sure, they gave up a lot of yards, but their offense was able to, they, they were able to pick off Mac Jones three times and were just able to stave off a victory. Uh, Bills are three-point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cover the spread. And now you have our very first four o'clock matchup, a rematch of the 2015 NFC Championship game between the Arizona Cardinals and the Carolina Panthers. Starting off with the Cardinals, uh, well, after a big win over the Raiders, you guys pulled off a bad loss, 20-12 to against the LA Rams. We had Kyler Murray, he threw for 314 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Lead rush was James Conner with 39 yards. Uh, the lead receiver was actually Hollywood Brown, uh, 14 receptions, 140 yards, followed by uh, Dorch, uh, 9 receptions, 80 yards, and then Zach Ertz, 6 receptions, 45 yards. That was pretty much it, and the defense just completely got exposed by Cooper Cup and the Rams, but honestly, I can't really fault you guys too much for that because, you know, Cooper Cup is an absolute dog. Uh, and then the Panthers, uh, 22 to 14 victory over the Saints. Baker Mayfield couldn't even complete 50% of his passes. 170 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Lead rusher was Christian McCaffrey with uh, 108 yards. But lead receiver was LaVisca Chanel Jr., two receptions, 90 yards, and a touchdown, followed by uh, Smith, two receptions, 22 yards, and then Richie, uh, one reception, 15 yards. And uh, that was pretty much it. And the defense, you know, they struggled a little bit against the pass game. Once again, they forced a whole lot of Saints turnovers, including a fumble that they returned for a touchdown. So, uh, you know, impressive win, especially on the defensive side. Panthers are a point and a half favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and come this And now you have our very next matchup, a classic AFC West rivalry between the Denver Broncos and the Las Vegas Raiders. Starting out with the Broncos, uh, you won 11-10 over the San Francisco 49ers. Russell Wilson looked a little shaky in it through for 184 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Once again, I really think most of this is on Nathaniel Hackett because he uh, just completely floundered. He's floundering as a head coach right now. Uh, lead rusher was Javante Williams with 58 yards, uh, Melvin Gordon with 26 yards and a touchdown, but you guys finally scored a touchdown on the red zone. So uh, it's about damn time, boys. And come on. The, like with, with the guys that you have on offense, this should be happening much more frequently. A uh, lead receiver who else but Cortland Sutton, eight receptions, 97 yards, 
followed by Melvin Gordon, uh, five receptions, 29 yards, and then Kendall Hinton, that's my boy, uh, one reception, 27 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense, yeah, they were able to lock down the San Francisco 49ers, which is pretty impressive, though. So props out to the defense, but the offense, if you really want to be seen as contenders, the offense really does need to step it up. And then the Raiders, uh, you're 0-3 on the season, so uh, it's already panic time for you guys. Uh, Derek Carr, he threw for 303 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Lead rusher was Josh Jacobs with 66 yards. Uh, lead receiver, you'd be thinking, was it Devontae Adams? It was actually Matt Collins, eight receptions, 158 yards and a touchdown, followed by Foster Moreau, three receptions, 44 yards, and then Devontae Adams, five receptions, 36 yards and a touchdown. That was pretty much it. And the defense just got exposed by Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill. Getting exposed by Henry, that's... Uh, not a problem, but getting exposed by Tannehill, uh, question marks should be raised. Uh, Raiders are two and a half point favorites to win this one, but I'm going to say that the Broncos pull off the upset. Now you have our very next matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the New England Patriots. You know, Brady versus Rodgers. What's not to love? Oh yeah, Brady's not a Patriot anymore, and you guys are most likely going to have to start Brian Hoyer. Anyway, starting out with the Patriots, a tough 37 to 26 loss against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Mac Jones threw for 321 yards, uh, no touchdowns, but three crucial interceptions. Uh, but it was all in the rushing game, whether it was Ramondre Stevenson with 73 yards on a touchdown, Damian Harris, 41 yards on a touchdown, and Mac Jones, 31 yards on a touchdown. Once again, no Mac Jones, so it's going to be Brian Hoyer, which is uh, alarm bells should be ringing. Uh, lead receiver was actually Devontae Parker, five receptions, 156 yards, followed by Kendrick Bourne, uh, four receptions, 58 yards, and Nelson Aguilar, two receptions, 41 yards. That was pretty much it, and the defense just got flat out exposed by uh, Lamar Jackson, but honestly, he's betting on himself, and he's doing an excellent job. And then the Packers, a uh, nail-biting 14-12 victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rodgers, he was okay, threw for 255 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. Uh, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, they could only muster up 36 and 32 yards. Uh, lead receiver was Dubes, uh, eight receptions, 73 yards, and a touchdown, followed by Randall Cobb, two receptions, 57 yards. Then Al Lazard, uh, four receptions, 45 yards, and a touchdown. And that was pretty much it. And the defense, they did a great job at keeping the Patriots down for as long as possible. Sure, they had a little bit of trouble against Russell, Russell Gage, but ultimately you lock them down. Bit of an asterisk next to it, though, because they were missing so many key players on offense. But, you know, wins win nonetheless. Anyways, Packers are 10-point favorites to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cover the spread. And now you have our Sunday Night Football matchup, a rematch of Super Bowl 55 between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Starting off with the Chiefs, a tough 20-17 to loss against the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, he threw for 262 yards, uh, one touchdown, one pick. Uh, lead rusher was actually Patrick Mahomes with 26 yards. But in terms of receiving, a uh, lead receiver was Juju Smith-Schuster, five receptions, 89 yards, followed by Travis Kelsey, four receptions, 58 yards, and then Marquez Valdez-Scantling, uh, four receptions, 48 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense, like they did a good job at keeping the Colts down outside of the final drive and your special teams just absolutely choked. Uh, and then the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a tough 14-12 to loss against the uh, Green Bay Packers. Tom Brady threw for 271 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Uh, lead rusher was Leonard Fournette. He could only muster up uh, 35 rushing yards. Lead receiver, though, was Russell Gage, 12 receptions, 87 yards, and a touchdown, followed by Cameron Braid, five receptions, 52 yards, and then Brashad Perriman, uh, three receptions, 44 yards. And uh, that was pretty much it. And the defense, sure, they were um, able to keep down the Green Bay Packers for as long as possible, but your offense just completely sold on you guys. But once again, you guys are missing a metric ton of wide receivers like no Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, uh, or Julio Jones. So obviously those are just some big losses. Anyways, the um, Chiefs are a point and a half favorite to win this one. I'm going to say that they win and cover this break. Get revenge on the on the uh, Buccaneers, even though the Buccaneers have the Super Bowl win. Now you have our Monday Night Football matchup, a classic NFC West rivalry, and a rematch of the 2021 NFC Championship game between the LA Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. Starting off with the Rams, a 20-12 victory over the uh, Cardinals. It was all right. Uh, uh, Matt Stafford threw for 249 yards, uh, no touchdowns, no picks. Lead rush was Cam Makers with 61 yards and a touchdown, followed by Cooper Cup with uh, 20 yards and a touchdown. Uh, lead receiver was a Sko, Sko working. I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, four receptions, 66 yards, followed by Tyler Higby, four receptions, 61 yards, and then Cooper Cup, four receptions, 44 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense, they were able to keep down the Arizona Cardinals. Sure, they had a lot of trouble against Hollywood Brown, but once again, a win's a win, and you guys pulled that off. And then the 49ers, just an embarrassing 11-10 loss against the Sam, uh, against the Denver Broncos. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo threw for 211 yards, one touchdown, one pick. 
but he did the greatest thing ever. Runs out of the back of the end zone for a safety. Foot is out. So he pulled the Dan Orlovsky safety. Dan Orlovsky is officially free, baby. Even his Twitter was absolutely hilarious. Like, freedom! Freedom! It was the best thing I'd ever seen. And it was followed up. Jeff Wilson Jr. Uh, ran for 75 yards. Lead receiver was uh, Debo Samuel with uh, five receptions, 73 yards, follow followed by Brandon Ayuk. Uh, three receptions, 39 yards, and a touchdown. And then Jeff Wilson Jr., three receptions, 31 yards. That was pretty much it. And the defense, uh, they did a good job at shutting down the uh, Denver Broncos, but they just could not get anything going on offense. Our uh, 49ers are a point and a half favorites to win this one. If there's one thing that Kyle Shanahan's good at doing, it's beating the Rams in the regular season. So give me the 49ers that they win and cover this That is going to wrap up my video for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you want to watch uh, week three predictions, click right over here. Uh, if you like this video, drop a like. Uh, subscribe to my channel by clicking right over here. Or the subscribe button down below would mean a whole lot to me. Uh, comment down below what your thoughts were on this video. Who's your upset of the week? Lock of the week? Favorite team going to win? And I, am I finally going to have a winning record in a week? Follow me on all my social medias, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok at Brennan Suter. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Uh, Houdet Nation in the Duke Blue Devils t-shirt is